Rappers say things straight up, but sometimes their lyrics have hidden meanings that fans miss. Today, we're bringing down some hidden disses most people never caught. We could have been superstars. Kodak Black, Super Gremlin. Kodak isn't known for throwing out subliminal disses, so most of his fans miss the hidden meaning behind this bar. It's allegedly a shot at Jack Boy, another rapper from Florida who used to be one of Yak's closest homies. Jack Boy is one of the first dudes Kodak signed to his label, Sniper Gang, but their relationship goes way deeper than that. They actually came up together, so once Yak blew up, he helped Jack Boy start to go viral. They've been homies since day one, but that ain't stopped the beat. Back in June 2021, Kodak hopped on Twitter and let everyone know he wasn't happy with the artist on his label. He said, a friend, I'm on business. I ain't signing rappers no more. These n****s ungrateful. Ain't nobody keeping nothing. I need mine. What's the problem? Apparently, there was a lot of issues going on behind the scenes over money, which sparked a beef between Yak and Jack Boy that's still going on. And at one point, Kodak allegedly tossed 100K into the ocean just to diss Jack Boy and show he could throw away money like it's nothing and still be good. Nobody on the outside really knows what's going on between them. But Kodak made the beef even more official by throwing shade at Jack Boy on Super Gremlin. Hopefully they can sort things out before it gets too crazy. These next two artists prove that even if you have one of the biggest beefs in rap history, you can still move on and link up in the future. You love her, then you gotta give the world tour. Is that a world tour or your girl's tour? Yeah, trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. You getting bodied by a singing I'm not the type of that a type to And shout out to all my boss wife and Drake, back to back. After Meek Mill tried to air Drake out for using Ghost Riders, Drake clapped back with two savage diss tracks that shocked everyone. But a lot of fans didn't get just how brutal these lines on back to back really were. Meek was still with Nicki Minaj when the track dropped, and Drake called him out for being the opening act on her tour. He was basically saying that Meek wasn't running things on the business side or in their relationship, and shouting out Nicki. Drake and Nicki had been friends for years, but that didn't stop Drake from going after her man when he needed to. Drake and Meek eventually squashed the beef and collab on the track going bad, but rap fans will never forget the shots they took at each other. I done made more millionaires than the Lotto did. They made millions, Biggs made millions, Ye made millions, Just made millions, Lior made millions, Cam made millions. Beans would tell you if he wasn't in his feelings. Jay-Z, Pound Cake. Everyone knows Jay-Z has put a ton of rappers on the map, but apparently, even making someone a millionaire isn't enough to keep him out of their feelings. Jay signed Beanie Siegel to Rockefeller Records in 2000 to help his career take off, but they started beefing a few years later when Beanie was facing attempted murder and weapons charges in 2003. Jay vouched for Beanie in court, but also said he wasn't responsible for him. Beanie went on Drink Champs last year and said, I never been crushed like that ever in my life. That took away a lot of shit that I thought we had. It's wild that Beanie was so pressed over the situation after everything Jay had done for him, but the beef ended up lasting over a decade. They finally squashed it in 2015 and took the stage together at a title concert, but Jay called him out a couple years earlier on Pound Cake. It wasn't a serious diss and a lot of fans didn't even catch it but Jay was just setting the record straight for anyone who had it twisted. Now when that shit went down with Chris, you wrote a check. In New Orleans, we're on my chain to get respect. You a fraud. So what that tell me? You a Deanna fan. Say the wrong shit, you know the shooter's at your neck. Meek Mill wanna know. Everyone remembers back to back, but Meek had some savage lines in his beef with Drake too. A lot of what he said went over people's heads though, cause they didn't know the backstory. The first line is a reference to 2012 when Chris Brown and Drake's crews got into a fight at a club. They eventually squashed it and worked together again. But Meek referenced a rumor that Drake cut Brown a check to settle the situation. Then he aired Drake out for wearing one of Meek's Dream Chaser chains at the 2014 NBA All-Star Game and sent a warning that there could be real life consequences if Drake wasn't careful about what he said. These were some wild disses, but what came next was even crazier. Robbed you in your city and you told. Tory from the six, you hating on him, Lord knows. Culture vulture, now it's time to pay the tolls. Soft as a lacrosse team, Boy, that's worth the hold. Meek Mill, War Paint. After one of No dropped, Drake shot back with Summer 16. Then, Meek shocked everyone when his response track, War Paint, came out just 15 minutes later. Rumors say that someone in Drake's crew leaked the lyrics to Summer 16, which is how Meek already had the response locked and loaded. On War Paint, Meek went after Drake for calling the cops after he got robbed in his hometown of Toronto back in 2009. Drake says that he didn't go to the trial because he didn't want the dudes to get locked up, but he still filed a police report after it went down. Then Meek called him out for dissing Tory Lanez on Summer 16. Lanez is another rapper from Toronto who's tight with Meek, so Drake sent shots at him too for no reason. The last line is a reference to a diss Jay-Z sent at Drake on the track They Don't Love You No More. Drake had dissed Jay in a Rolling Stone interview, so Jay clapped back with the line, Wrong sport, boy. You know you soft as a lacrosse team. Contract all f***ed up. I guess that means you all f***ed up. You signed to one that's signed to another that's signed to three 
Now that's bad luck. Pusha T, Exodus 23.1. Pusha T has said these lines aren't about Lil Wayne or YMCMB, but a lot of fans and other artists think that's cap. Some say it's about Drake, because Drake is on the Wayne's Young Money label, which is under Birdman's Cash Money label, which is under Universal Records. But most people think it's aimed at Wayne himself. Wayne was a Birdman's YMCMB label, Birdman was signed with Ronald Williams' Cash Money label, and Cash Money is under Universal too. Even though Pusha said it wasn't about them, Wayne tweeted, Pusha T and anybody that love him after the track drop. So obviously, he took the diss personally. You nick talk to them little kids. You ain't famous to me. Told you I'm aiming straight for the head, not aiming to please. I could give a f about who designing your sneakers and tees. Have somebody put you on a gilding, you play with my seed. Drake, 7 a.m. on Bridal Path. Kanye and Drake have been beefing for years, but the situation heated up after Kanye leaked Drake's address back in August 2021. But when Drake sent shots on this track, a lot of fans didn't catch it. First off, he went after Ye and Adidas. Drake has deals with Nike, and he just Adidas before on Sickle Mode with the line, Jesus Christ, yeah, checks over stripes. But the main shot was Drake rapping, he'd put them on a shirt if they played with his family. This is allegedly referencing Ye leaking his address, which will obviously put Drake's whole family in danger if some crazy fans wanted to try something, but it was never confirmed. OVO 40 hunched over like he 80. Tick, 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 how much time he got? That man is sick, sick, sick. I got the devil flow, 666. Surgical summer with it, snip, snip, snip. Pusha T, the story of Adi Don. The story of Adi Don is one of the most savage diss tracks in history. Drake had beef with other rappers before, but no one expected Pusha T to come through with such a savage line. Every rap fan knows the track, but a lot of them didn't know the meaning behind one of the wildest disses. Noah Shabib, aka 40, is Drake's main producer. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis back in 2005, which is a serious condition that can cause numbness, tremors, and bad posture. So Pusha really went for the kill when he dissed 40 and said he hunched over like an 80 year old and could die soon. And you can tell Pusha knew how crazy the diss was because he compared himself to the devil in the next line. Most fans focused on Pusha exposing Drake for hiding his kid, but going after 40 like that is just cold. I don't even know what you would've done. In the future of the niggas playing football with your son, Jay-Z, kill Jay-Z. Kill Jay-Z is really like a diss track that Jay made against himself, but he also snuck in this line with a hidden meaning allegedly about future. On the track, Jay's talking about all the mistakes he's made over the years, especially how he stepped out on Beyonce and almost lost his kids. This line is talking about himself, but it's also a reference to what happened to Future. Future had a son with an R&B singer named Sierra, but they split up after Future cheated on her. Then Sierra got with the Seattle Seahawks quarterback, Russell Wilson, and Future's son has been seen in his games and calling him Papa. Even though it wasn't a direct diss, Future obviously didn't like the line. In an interview with the Dirty Boys, a Hot 107.9 in Atlanta, he said, you supposed to be bigging me up. You're not supposed to be giving that no negative attention for a hot line that's always gonna be out. It is what it is. I ain't even tripping off him. That's talking shit just to get a reaction. Going platinum, I looked at my wrist and it's already platinum. I'm the kid with the motor mouth. I'm the one you should worry about. Drake, the language. Most rappers wouldn't go after someone as popular and skilled as Kendrick. But after Control Drop, Drake proved he was ready for the smoke. Drake helped Kendrick pop off by featuring him on his Take Care album, then giving him a feature for Good Kid Mad City. So he felt disrespected when Kendrick called him out on Control. On the language, Drake sent shots at Kendrick for calling rappers out just so people would pay more attention to him. Kendrick clapped back on J-Rock's track Pay For It with the line, been dissecting your motor mouth till I break down the engine. But the beef didn't end there. A few years later, Obama said that Kendrick would win in a rap battle against Drake. But if Drake and Kendrick Lamar got in a rap battle, who do you think would win? You gotta go with Kendrick. I'm just saying, I, I, I think Drake is, is, is uh, an outstanding entertainer, but Kendrick, his lyrics, his last album was outstanding. Excellent, all right. Best, uh, best album, I think, uh, last year. So Drake called them both out on Summer 16 and said, tell Obama that my verses are like the whips that he in. They bulletproof. Which just hit the hardest? Drop any disses we missed in the comments below and we'll cover them in the next one.